we are with this big old Terraflex sticker on the Jeep. This is embarrassing. It's time. We got to do a four inch long arm on this thing. Come on, five minutes. Hey, grab a couple of rocks while you're out there. Five minutes and I'm gone. Hi, I'm Dennis. I'm Dennis with Terraflex. Today we want to run through all the necessary preparation steps to installing a long arm kit. First thing we need to do is just set the hoist. Now if we set the hoist so that we don't have to do it twice, meaning don't catch an arm that you're going to be trying to remove later, make sure that we've got access to all the brackets to cut them off. It'll save you a lot of time. JKs have kind of a neat spot you can lift them on and that's the body mounts all along the side of the frame here. If you're lucky enough to have a hoist where you can take the top off it and use one of these arms, they work great. You can just catch them right on that nut and index is on there and just holds them really solid. Now I've put it under that middle body mount to make sure that we've got access to the back here. Uh, it looks like it's a long ways forward, but when we get it up in the air, we'll just throw a jack stand on the back and she'll be solid. By adding this jack stand to the back of the Jeep, it really brings a lot of stability to these hoists. We want it good and stable because we're going to be doing a lot of cutting and welding and twisting. We don't want that Jeep moving on us. I'm going to grab a garbage can here. <laughs> when we high centered this, we kind of filled this skid plate full of a bunch of dirt and I don't want to wear it in here. Now our ultimate goal here is to get this gas tank out of the way. We're going to start with this skid plate. We'll drop it and that's going to give us access to the drive line. Now normally you wouldn't have to take the drive line out. But in this particular install, we're going to replace this drive line with Terraflex's new CV style heavy duty drive line. As long as we're going to replace it, let's get it out of the way now. It'll give us better access to that gas tank. So let's grab a 19 millimeter and we'll start taking that skid plate down. Oh. We survived that. Well, we did pretty good on that garbage can. We actually caught all the dirt. So we'll get this out of the way. And we'll start on the driveline bolts. There's eight driveline bolts at each end, and they're kind of long threaded. They're pretty long winded bolts. If you're doing it with an end wrench, I'm sorry. We've got a little air ratchet here, 5 16 socket, and they just come right out. Okay, we've got all those loose. We'll go up and hit these front ones. Once we've got all these loose, we'll show you how to loosen this drive line up. These are kind of captured in the yokes on the diff and as well as the transfer case, so the drive line is not really going anywhere. Well, with all those bolts loose, we're ready to take the drive line out. Now, it's going to come out of the front a lot easier than it is out of the back, and I'll show you why. We're going to need a, a punch and a, and a hammer to knock this out. If you've had your drive line on a while, it's going to be a little bit tough to get out of this yoke back here. So what it does is it gives us a, an access port to run a punch through it. You can see the bolt holes, and that one's an access port. So we can just tap this out. Okay. Now they gave us a, a port on both sides so you can rotate the drive line around and just tap it a few times. 
and that'll, there it goes, it comes right out. So you just work it back and forth a couple of times. And okay, once we've got it broken loose, I'll just push it out. There we go. And it's ready to come out. Now there's one thing you do not want to do, and that's let this drive line hang on that front joint up there, because that binds around, it'll ruin that seal and cut the rubber on it. So just use a tie strap, hold it up out of the way. Shoot, you can use a jack stand. Um, just any old thing that'll sit here and hold it up for you while you take the front off. Jen? Just hold that up for me. Okay, the front one's gonna come out a little bit easier. Okay, she's got it supported up. I can usually just wiggle it and yeah, it'll work its way out. So there's that drive line. Now with the drive line out of the way, we'll be able to access the eight bolts holding the tank up. We'll be able to get to the uh, fuel lines a little bit easier to get those disconnected. So let's just get right on the, you can put that down. We'll just get right on the fuel lines on here to start with. You gotta be careful with that drive line. When we take these clamps off, we're gonna move the one off of the fill spout here. We're gonna use this vent tube. We're disconnecting that one. The rest of them will be able to get down here where it's a little bit easier access. When they put this clamp on, I think they did it because uh, it was easy for them because the body was off. So it's kind of a awkward one to get on. There we go. Once it's a little bit loose, we can rotate it around, give us some better access. All right, that should be loose enough to get that fill spout out. Now, if you're lucky enough to have your Jeep a little lower on gas, it'll sure make life easier on you when you're taking this tank down. Now, this clip on this one all you have to do is push on the little white section of it and that'll release it. All right, the clamp's loose. We can just go ahead and pull the fill spout off. They usually come off without too much trouble. Chrysler's really done a kind of a marvelous job with all these connectors, how you can just squeeze them. Like, for example, this one down here on the EVAP. You can just squeeze it top and bottom, kind of on the inside, the out, and it just releases it and the thing pops right off. So they're pretty quick disconnects on them. If you've been driving your Jeep uh, just before you're gonna start doing this project, you may have some pressure in the tank. So you may wanna just pop that gas cap and bleed off any pressure there. Same will happen on these return lines and your pressure line up on the front of the tank. We'll uh, take those off next. They've also got some little disconnects on them. The other thing that's gonna happen is you're gonna have some fuel pressure build up in these fuel lines. This is gonna be your pressure line and your return line. Now, to get those off, they have a little blue squeeze disconnect on them. So you just squeeze that little connector and just pop them off. So that's pretty nice. At least that one is. When you go to do this fuel line, it's a little more work. Same story, squeeze those two connectors together and then just work it past it. You've just got to rock that thing back and forth and just kind of slide it back and forth and fight it. Okay, and out it comes. Whoops, and there's your, uh, there's your little bit of fuel spill there, but we caught that. Okay, we got the lines off. We'll go ahead and drop this tank down. Now, if you've done a little prep work, emptied that tank out, it'll make it a lot lighter. Don't do it with a full tank. Uh, Jen, if you're recovered, let's get this tranny jack over here and we'll uh, get going on these eight bolts. All right. All right, we'll take some pressure off this gas tank with this tranny jack so we can loosen it up. Yeah, now she's focused. Let's do these three bolts here. One, two, and three on this side of it. Now we've got two on the front and then another the three on the back side. This is for all the lonely people.
stitch it back on for this last bolt. It's kind of tucked up under here between the tire and the fender. See what you got right there? All right, we've got all the bolts out of it. We'll just lower it down a little. When we get the tank down, that'll give us access to the electrical connectors for the fuel pump up on top. Uh, this is just like the connectors we've seen in the past. It's got that little red safety clip on it. We just put that out of the way a little bit. And I'm gonna step around the other side. It gives me better access to pull on this connector. We just push on the release on it and pull it off. there. You push down on the release and then it should just slide right off. <laughs> That's that. Okay now we'll just kind of watch as we lower this tank down to make sure that there's no other wires or anything catching as we lower it down. By getting this out of the way it's going to really save us some issues here. If, uh, if we got a spark or anything up on top of this tank, come down okay? I'd hate to think what would happen if a spark laid on top of this thing and melted into that tank. All right, with that tank out of the way, we're ready to get going on this lift. We're going to pull the tires off it, and then we're going to start pulling the control arms off. We'll get the track bars off, everything out of the way so that we're ready to start cutting and welding. You on board with this? You ready to get going?